Welcome to Up Next, our regular Rovers roundtable as we build up to the finals series after a compelling year again here at Post Office Road. In the company of Mark Carella uh, and Jonathan Ford looking ahead and reflecting a little bit as well. And with the news uh, in the last few days that you two are staying here at the Millennium Stadium, having agreed extensions uh, to your contract, which is great news, I'm, I'm sure, for all concerned, including yourselves. Um, talk us a little bit. Mark, through the, the thought process, it is, if indeed there was one about uh, choosing to, to, to extend here at Rovers? Yeah, the, the decision wasn't too hard, um, especially I felt not compelled, but I wanted, I didn't think like I gave what I wanted to give this year, but we were after my injury, so, you know, to be given a, a second chance is pretty nice, and um, I, I'm really enjoying myself here, like the support and the team and the coaching staff and that, it's, I'm really enjoying it, so it wasn't that hard to make that decision. And what about you, Jono? Is, is this something you had to give some serious thought to or not? No, no, we're super happy here and loving it. So, Mrs. is happy, I'm happy, the kids are happy. So, yeah, no, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's wonderful news for myself. And, um, and to be doing it alongside Kilo, who I've you know, known since we were you know, 20 years old, um, that was a major factor how it's sort of come about when he signed and you know, things sort of got moving that direction. Um, and then, obviously, his injury and not being able to play as much as you know, put ourselves in what, what we do together on the field. So uh, it's exciting um, for the future. So, Yeah, how much of a, a frustration is that? There's been some real highlights, some great stuff so far this season. Hopefully there is still to come. But how big a frustration has that been for you both, perhaps, Mark, first of all, that, you know, you two and the, the, the team that you, you are and you bring for whatever reasons that, that John has just alluded to, we haven't seen that yet. Yeah, it's a shame. It's killing me sitting on the sidelines, to be fair, because <laughs> uh, I know I know what I can bring, you know, and I, I like, and especially working with him, who, like you said, we've known each other now for, God, a long time, <laughs> um, and we just know each other's games so well, and so we really complement each other, and I know that um, if we had that opportunity here, we would see a lot more of what we were brought to the team to do. Um, and so I think, you know, this, the unfortunate thing is these things happen in rugby league and, um, you know, like John said, we'll build for the future and hopefully next year we can bring a lot more highlights and hopefully in a higher level of rugby league, I guess. Yeah, do you, do you share that, that appetite and, you know, that, that frustration as well for, for trying to make things click when you get the chance now? Yeah, well, it's always, it's pretty much every, always every game, it's like that, I'm trying to make it click, make it click, and it makes it a lot easier when, you know, someone who knows my game inside out, and I know his inside out, and if the, the biggest thing for me is we're always having fun when we're playing together, it's just like playing back, backyard footy, so, you know what I mean, we're enjoying ourselves, um, it's like playing touch, we trained all lockdown, just playing touch footy with each other, and whoever was, would jump in from, you know, so, um, yeah, it's literally that, on top of you know doing something special with um, Fev is, is something exciting that I'm I'm sort of pumped to, to be about in going into the future. And just on this news, you know when players extend and and often it's a funny period towards the end of a season where you don't know if you're going to be promoted or not. Was was that ever a factor? I know, and you've both played at Toulouse, where I'm, I know a lot of players would have been on Super League status only or Championship only contracts. Was that ever a part of this? I'd commit no matter what, do you know what I mean? That's that's where I was at. I was committing no matter what, you know. So still looking at Super League, so that's that's the goal, that's what I'm here for. So I'm committed for Super League. And then I'm committed for championship, but that's not where I'm thinking, you know. We're we're working towards Super League and that's what's important for um for us as a club and, and as a group and as a community. So Yeah, and for myself, like I oh, I really, from the day first day I arrived, I really enjoyed it. So that's a big thing for me, especially at my age and in my um, where I'm at in the moment in my career. Um, so for me, I was like, oh, I, I want to be here. I think it'd be mad as well to, you know, get into Super League and start playing in a couple of the derbies who, you know, like Cass and Wakey and Leeds and all. I think that would be awesome to sort of be a part of. Um, but yeah, no, it wasn't a big factor. Uh, we'll talk about that in a sec, where we are um, heading into the playoffs and the, and the prospect, which has always been the goal of, of getting to the top table in, in Super League for, for the very first time. In terms of off the field, you know, give us a perspective, both of you, of, of how it's been and how you've adjusted. You know, you're still... <laughs> you were telling me you've still not got much in the house, Jono. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got TV yet? I don't know. 
we've got a TV. But, <laughs> but how has that adjustment been? Because you've had the family stuff going on yeah, as well. Yeah, you know, yeah. your, your, your partner's you yeah, know, we introduced birth. someone. Yeah, yeah we exactly. gave birth so here. So that it's was... been a big change for you. Yeah, massive change. Um, that's It's just getting the balance of, you know, going from, you know, we had two and we're, you know, we're a team, but now we're outnumbered. So, um, so we're playing a man short, but <laughs> it's all good. Um, but like I've told everyone, the fans, anyone I've spoken to, I reckon like the nicest people in the world, like, and that's not even a piss take. Like yeah. we mean killer sitting down, having a feed and we go, man, everyone's just so nice here. Like it's like, like actually like I'm walking, it's what I'm used to from where I'm from, from a small town, just outside of Newcastle and everyone, you know, you take your, your bins out for your neighbour or you bring them in for your neighbour or you say good day when you walk past someone in the street and that's like everywhere around where I've, I've been around, you know, here and and I'm, I'm living at, at Pony, so um, everywhere I walk you just, and it's not like I'm a, anyone, you know, it's just any person, you just good day, how are you? Well, they're not saying good day, they're up or whatever. <laughs> I'd be surprised. I'm saying, I'm saying good day. I'm saying good day, and they're saying hey up or whatever. So, but honestly, yeah, everyone's nice as, and um, you know, the club, everyone like, and it's not you know cliche. Oh yeah, but it, it really is. They're really nice people, and you know, and I'm enjoying that. Like you know, it's a sense of community, which I um, I think we all long for, which is which is good. But to be a part of something special with a club, which is entrenched within the community, it's cool. Yeah, does it feel like home for you? Yeah, I remember when you first touched down and for the for the next few weeks after that you were you were going around with, with trolleys, you know, putting various <laughs> kitchenware and utensils and <laughs> go, go to Ikea on your days off and all sorts. Does it feel like home? Yeah, yeah it does. It definitely does now, especially because uh, my, um, my wife, she arrived uh, two weeks ago from um, France. So oh, wow. now she's back over here full time. Um, it's definitely a lot more of home. I was uh, telling Bordeaux, it was actually probably a week or two before I actually hurt my knee where I felt really like, okay, put my feet down you know and um but yeah no nah, it really suits my lifestyle living over here you know it's a beautiful place to walk the dog lots of golf courses <laughs> which is nice and there's plenty of boys that play too so uh it's been fantastic and what, what have her first, first impressions been uh, what well, is she like? What's she, what's she not like? Well she hasn't got the good weather <laughs> it's been raining since she's arrived but um no nah, she's enjoying it too because I, I made the house all nice and that like oh, with all the freaking trolleys that are going to be and and stuff <laughs> um so she's really enjoyed it and you know being close to the forwards and that too is really helpful because you know her Jono's wife and that is and my wife are quite close being in Toulouse for so long so um that makes it a lot easier for her making that transition over uh, let's talk a bit about on the pitch then yeah I mean you've you're obviously immediately post-op and you're you know you're recovering and we wish you well with that you got knocked out recently, <laughs> um, and that's latest in succession of like you know really unfortunate setbacks for you. You had to be patient, didn't you, yeah. to get in the team at first, and then I remember coming here excited to see your debut, and then you got ruled out yeah. basically on the day, yeah. and then you got in the side. You finally got a run in the halves, and then you got knocked out. Yeah. Uh, you know, how do you reconcile that mentally with what's been such a disruptive start to your Rovers career? Oh, it is frustrating because I know I've. You know, I've got a lot to add and I've got a lot to bring and I think I can make a big difference within the group um, and the team. So, yeah, it's frustrating and I'm, I just like, I just want to be out there, you know, or like any footy player, you want to be out there all the time. And I, and I believe in myself, so, and I, um, I just want to, you know, give back to the club and the fans and everyone, you know, who supported me in coming here. So, um, yeah, I'm always, you know, stinging. Like, I, you know, I get frustrated and a bit upset and I'm sort of, kicking stones here and there. Not not that I wasn't getting picked, but I mean, kicking stones when you have little niggles and stuff. Mm. Um, I was always, you know, trying my best to, to take care of myself and stuff. And when those little niggles or, you know, you get knocked out, that's sort of out of my control. But little niggles and stuff like that, that's frustrating. Um, when I try to look after myself, you know, so well, um, that's where I'm getting a bit down on myself. But yeah, it's, it's part of footy and that's part of life, isn't it? Like, these little things come about and and from every minute that was passing in every game that you were playing just before you, you, you got the head injury, did you feel like everything was coming together? Because from my, my position in the commentary box, I could just see what, what was coming together around you. Every single minute you were you seemed to be seizing the game by the you know, the scruff of the neck, like like we got used to the two lose, John O'Ford, and then suddenly you're out for a few weeks. Yeah, it, it's grown and it still is growing. It's it's me getting to understand the boys and the boys getting to understand me and how I sort of fit in with the group. Um, so yeah, it, it, I felt like it's coming and I think it still is coming. I still think we've got a lot, lot more to go as a group um, to grow into where, where we're going. So it's exciting times. You know, I feel like there's, there's some good things coming, so we'll, we'll see. And did you sense that, you know, watching on 
seeing what what Jono was doing, knowing this guy probably better than anyone, could you sense that right? This is it. This is this is what he's here for. He's he's dictating. He's directing this team now. Yeah, definitely. Like I've seen it in the in the days, the training days before the game, um, when he did play. I forget who it was now. And then what he did in that training sessions he brought to the um, to the game. And I was like, yeah, that's who. That's the Jono that I know and have played alongside for so long. And it's just that consistency. Like he hasn't been able to put a string of games together, you know. But if he gets a handful. It won't take long for the rest of the boys to figure out what he can do um, because he's so good at making them get into positions and especially put that early practice in during the week. So um, when I was watching, especially seeing like him putting Josh Hardcastle through a couple of holes, yeah. I was like, yeah, he, he, can, he can play. <laughs> uh, in terms of you know, yeah, updates, updates on injuries, injuries obviously you're, you're, you're long term. I don't know if you're aiming at anything yet you probably missed the start of this next season with you. i'm aiming for april april is, is your aim that's about well. seven months about seven months and you'll be okay will you for the for the final series yeah yeah, yeah that's that's the the you know that's the point of the season that's what we're here for and that's yeah. what we're aiming towards so um getting myself in good nick for that um is important and not trying to rush you know just to get back and you know so getting getting in good nick for the finals and making sure we've got everyone on board and we're running and we're working together so yeah, that's that's where it's at, and that's what I'm. That's what's happening. So, uh, well, as if by magic, you might have noticed that I've shuffled along a seat. When we started this, guys, we were, the, there was supposed to be four of us, but but the other guy, the the, the other guy was late, <laughs> very late, or, or early for the next match, maybe. So it was. <laughs> here, he, here he is. Put a traffic. Put a traffic out there. Yeah. <laughs> Post road uh, got me. <laughs> Joey Lay Lewis joined us. Um, well, we... Great to have you with us. Better late than never. You've uh, like these two. You've extended your stay as well. You're a, you've signed on. You're you're here for Rovers next year. Was that an easy decision for you to make? Oh, it was quite easy to be honest. Um, me and my family enjoyed it here so far. Really love the place to be honest. Kids love it. They love the school and the lifestyle here. So it was easy. Um, easy choice for me. And you're a big big family man. So was that a key drive in your decision? Your your family and your kids being being happy here, which they are. Yeah, it was. It was a. Uh, it was actually the main factor. Me staying here was we didn't want to move anywhere else. We sick of moving, so we wanted to stay. Stay here. <laughs> that was the main reason, to be honest. Yeah. And, you, and you got a nice jumper out of it as well. Yeah, yeah. I paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, you joined us at a point where we were just about to actually, you know, talk about where we are in the season and look ahead look ahead to the playoffs. How do you feel about the way things have gone and where we are now? Is there the feeling that things are starting to get where we wanted them to be? Yeah, since that game we played in, um, I think, was it Headingley? I think we're from there. Oh, the Bash game. The Bash game. Yeah. So I think from then on, we kind of sat down as a team and said, well, we need to improve on. Probably mm. our fitness as, as a whole collective group. We need to um, be better there. And... You know, we just kicked on from there. So six weeks were the six weeks we've we've had. It was been tough, but I've enjoyed it. And yeah, it was, wasn't that nice to be honest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you how do you guys feel? Obviously, you've uh, you've mainly been killer on the on the sideline for the last few weeks. But have you looked at this thinking, yeah, this is what we wanted kind of a few months ago. We're we're, we're getting there now at just the right time in the season. Yeah, I mean, it's, you build, you obviously build for the whole season towards finals. You know? And I think like um, Joe was saying about after the Henningley game, we had, really had to sit back and say, well, probably not where we needed to be. But like from where I've been watching on the sideline, the boys have been putting in a lot of work, you know, and I think um, it, it'll come at a really good time because, I mean, at the end of the day, you only got to win that last game, you know. Um, so each, each day you just continuously build. But like Joe was saying, the past six weeks have been pretty full on. Yeah, are you are you sensing that, Jono? That it's just kind of stepped up a notch. Yeah, this part. Yeah, it has. Yeah, and I'm. Um, I think it's giving us all confidence. You know, I'm I'm gaining confidence and saying, you know, boys working harder, and it's you know it's pushing me to work a bit harder, or you know, work and tweak things on my game, and everyone's everyone's just you know sort of just pushing each other along. Um, but yeah, I'm gaining a lot of confidence seeing boys get some good results um, in whatever they, their targets were and what they were getting going. So, yeah, I'm getting a lot of confidence just just looking across the group and going, wow, these boys are having a crack. You know, I'm in on it too. So, yeah, it's exciting. And we've so far in, in this edition of Up Next not mentioned 
Lee, it's always good to focus on you and what you're doing, but obviously the team to beat, mm. as we all know, Joey, it's Lee. And I remember how upset and angry and frustrated you were after that game at Tottenham, that, that cup final, when you came up short against Lee. How much does that does that trigger you and, and still fire you on now to, like, if you get one more shot of them now to get it right? Yeah, I haven't really thought about that again. I feel like I'm, I'm the top person that kind of, Let it go. Once, once the game's gone, I, I kind of get angry after the game and yeah. then probably a day later I forget about it because I'll just move on to the next game. So as Killer said, we've got, it's only one game at the end of the year, at the end of the year so we just got to build it towards that. Once we get there, it's anyone's game. So. Has it been about, Killer, has it been about working out how to beat Lee? Is it as simple as that or is, is, it, is there more to it than that? No, it's more focused on ourselves. Because, um, you know, like the, we, we look, watched over the game, reviewed it, you know, and a lot of the things were at our own fault, you know, things that we could have had control of because we need to be at our best at the end of the day to beat, especially when it comes to finals, especially the grand final. Um, and so a lot of this, these past few weeks and this past, say, month and a half, it's been really focused on us and making sure that we're crystal clear on what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, and I think the fitness level thing too has played a major, major factor in it as well. So um, not too focused on them because at the end of the day too, we've still got to win a few more games yeah. to get there, you know. So you can't really be worrying too much about the, the next month or whatever, however many weeks it is. We've got a game this weekend and then we think weekend off and then a game next weekend. So um, it's the old cliche of taking it day by day, you know, this game first and the next. But each day with us is building on us. Yeah. Uh, I want to just ask you all two things before we, we finish with this episode. I want to ask you in a sec about, about the fans. And you've already mentioned, John, about the community and the great feel about the place, which I know is a big pull for, for the three of you to extend here at Rovers. Before I ask you about that, I want to ask you about the coach and how it's been with, with Brian this year. I know, Joey, first of all, you know, you're quite tight with Brian. You, I've seen you fighting him in the gym yeah. out the back <laughs> <laughs> with the boxing gloves on. Um, no, how, no, how, how big... <laughs> uh, you actually told me that you and Brian want some, want some fights, want some paid fights. So, yeah, how has that relationship been? How, has that, how key has that been for you as well here? Oh, he's, been, he's been good, to be honest. Being Mac is... I call him being Mac. He's just <laughs> different, you know. Um, he's just the kind of coach where he wants to get the best out of you. Yeah. And... Um, in, as you said, we have those boxing matches in the gym, but it scared me the first time I saw you two go down it. I'll be honest. Uh, no, he, he can throw him, the old fella. He was, uh, <laughs> even, uh, <laughs> he's about eighty, isn't he? <laughs> Next no, but he's, he's a good coach. Um, he knows what he's talking about, and the boys feed off him. You know, um, I, th I don't think he's he's only got mad once after a game, but um, I think he really cares about the team and really cares about the club and where we're going towards. So that's the that's the main thing I got out of him. He really cares about how we perform as a team, and that's what it kind of shows um, the last couple of weeks how we've been, how we've been playing. So, yeah. really enjoyed him so far. Now, how have how have you enjoyed it, Jono, playing for this coach? No, it's good. It's good fun. He's you know he's funny as well, and he's you know you don't you don't know what's going to come out <laughs> at the training and stuff, which is good. Keeps you on your toes. Um, he knows his footy. He knows um, he sort of understands you know people and and. You know, he's pushing people in different buttons and things like that. But um, it's just good. You can have a chat and it's not always just talking about footy. You're talking about, you know, all, all different things in life. And, and it's, <laughs> it's good, like, because some coaches, you're just, you know, stuck talking about footy all the time, which I love footy. I'll talk footy all day. But it's also good to, you know, when you cross someone, you can talk about other things outside of footy and life. And it could be, who knows what it is. But it's, you know, you're prepared for anything when you're talking to Mac. Like, you know what I mean? And if, if you wanted a, a coach to lead you into a finals series... You know, if you looked at his honours list, you wouldn't pick many above Brian McDermott, would you, Mark? No, definitely not. With all, everything that he's accomplished over the years, you know, um, I think it, from my previous my experience speaking to people from who have had him in the past, I've always said that he builds you for that end game. You know, he builds you for finals, and it's showcasing in the past month or so, definitely. Uh, let's talk then, just finally on you know on the fans here. We're just in the in the club shop, as you can see, next to some. Brilliant new retro gear, which yeah. we've all helped ourselves to today. Um, although Joey paid for his, apparently. I oh, paid for mine last uh, week, back. <laughs> <laughs> um, the match day experience here is, you know, is fantastic. We, we talk about the family. It was, it was obviously big for all of you in, in deciding to stay here at least a, another year. How big an 18th man is, yeah, you can all answer this, but Mark, first of all, is it on a match day and, and the support you get around the place? 
you know, that community feel and the, and the support base here, how, how, how big a deal is that? No, it's amazing, you know, like, because I've been on both ends of it now. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, like, I know for being an opposing player, um, when you come here, it's tough because, you know, they're in your face <laughs> for the whole 80 minutes. But, you know, being on the other side has been fantastic. Like I got a couple of my neighbours are big Fed fans and stuff too, and you know that they just they always say hello and you know congratulate on the game and stuff and make sure everything's doing all right. But um, like John said, everyone's just so friendly, you know. So it's better to be on that side <laughs> than the other. And you've already alluded to you know the community spirit and how friendly people are yeah. out and about. But but in terms of when you're out there on on the pitch, how much of a difference does it make to have that support all around you? Oh, when when the stands are you know full and and it's you know. It's popping and everyone's there and they're having a good time and um, it's just good. It's just good to look out and just see the stands and everyone loving it. And then after, you know, you, you know, you go around and you say good day and you have a photo and you know, um, have a chat and that's uh, that's important because you know without the fans, you know, what are we doing? You know what I mean? That's who. That's where all the money comes from is from the fans. Is it, where, you know, they they put the demand for the product that we're you know we're out there playing a game of footy and stuff. But if they didn't love you know the sport or you know the league you know footy as much as as they did you know where would we, we wouldn't be here. so i think that's the backbone to it you know it's not about you know we're out there playing but the fans you know they keep the footy they keep us going and they keep us here so um yeah big respect to them a final word perhaps on that joey to you you've already told us you know how, how happy your family are here and, yeah. and stuff but in terms of what the fans give you out there you played at top level in, in nrls and stuff at how do this lot compare? Well, I'll be honest, because they weren't honest. <laughs> 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 oh, well, it's, like they're, it's a bit different from back home. They don't cheer as much back home, where over here they go nuts yeah. for their club. And that's what I, I love about Fev. Well, in England itself, like, everyone cheers their own club on, but especially these Fev fans, they really get behind the, behind the team. And then the honest side, when they do, when we do start losing against bad teams, or teams that we should beat, which is badly one of them. Um, yeah, they they kind of give it to you, but it's in a, in a good way. Which wants wants me and I want the boys to play well for them because you know you don't want your fans going off at you like that. But um, yeah, that's me being honest, boys. So don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, uh, you and the fans have got a huge part to play for the rest of this season. I know you guys have. Uh, well, some of you have got to get to training. Yeah. Uh, are you still going to train? Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, all involved. Is, uh, this, is this live too? <laughs> We're not live. Uh, I was going to say. <laughs> Uh, by the way, there's a fan there. So I'll say hello. Thank you for looking after my. Oh, for taking my son. This is right next door. Next, next door to you. Oh, really? Yeah, that lady. I've got her name. <laughs> what a she's, 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 she always sees you walking around with no shoes uh, all the time. It would be. Yeah, yeah. it would be me. Yeah. She looks her neighbours. She goes, oh, tell John I said hello. And I said, oh, I just want to say thank you. Yeah. Well, you've done it. Well, yeah. thank you for your time yeah, today. For my son. I remember that. Um, best of luck. For, for the next few weeks and we're really looking forward to beyond this season wherever Rovers end up for senior round um, on the on off the pitch for at least one more year as well Joey Leilua uh, John O'Ford Mark Carella uh, thank you very much for your time and thanks for joining us this week on Up Next <laughs>